everyone, it's Gwen, and I just wanted to jump in and put together a quick video because I had a question today from somebody who just got a couple of my new stencils and was looking for some pointers on how to use them, specifically the ornamental peacock and then like the compass and the, um, the ornamental petals, the masks. So I thought I would show you just a couple of quick ways that you can use these in your art journaling, your mixed media work, scrapbooking, art quilts, whatever it is that you're working on. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you this is a mask and this is the stencil version. And the difference between these is that if I take a brush and some paint and I stencil through this hole, I'm going to end up with the shape of the peacock painted on the paper. Whereas if I take the mask and then I go around it with paint, I'm going to lift this up and the peacock will still be whatever color the paper is underneath. So I don't know if that helps, but I know that's one question that I guess ask all the time is what's the difference between a stencil and a mask? So I thought I would start out by just showing you some basic ways that you can use it. Um, and this one, let's start with a small one for this. Let's get get the compass. One of the things that I do is I kind of don't really do anything special at all is I just take that and I just treat it kind of like a stencil and sometimes these are a little tough to get open. So um, I'm going to just throw a little paint on my palette. I mean you can use spray inks, you can use ink pads and a, a foam blender or a, a, um, a, a Ma uh, makeup pad or something. It's late. I can't talk tonight. Um, I use these if I'm using ink, these little Tim Holtz mini blending tools. But um, anyway, for the paint, I'm going to put this up here so you can see it. The key to, I'll show you two things at once. The key to the, the stenciling with paint is I prefer a brush. You can use a sponge either way. The important thing is that you tamp off most of the paint, and that might be Sylvia, but you can see there's not really a whole lot of paint on there, and it probably looks like less than you think it should be, but the first thing that I do with a mask is I just, I hold it in place. I mean, you could use some spray or something to make it sticky, but you'll see as I'm working through here, I don't go too far outside the lines when I'm doing this with a mask. And you can also see how far that little bit of paint goes. So I tend to get a little lazy and start dragging my brush, which works just fine as long as you don't have lots and lots of paint on there. But you can see how by having so little paint on your brush, and look how little is left on there when I'm done, you can see how crisp and clean the lines are as opposed to, say, if you, I don't even know if I have enough paint to do it, if you were to take a whole bunch of paint and go at that, it just doesn't want to come out. If you were to take a whole bunch of paint, and you maybe you want this look, you can see the difference in how much paint is on there, and then start stenciling with that and lift it up, and you can see that the lines are not as crisp and there's a little bit of bleeding underneath there. So you can see the difference between uh, I mean, the main key to getting the crisp lines and stenciling is just to pounce off as much of that as possible. So another way that you can use these is you can see when they come, they come in the two pieces. And you snip this out with scissors, and then you have a stencil and you have a mask. So you can take this and you can do kind of some two-part stenciling here. I've got some goopiness in my... You just treat this just like a regular stencil. So you can lift that off, and now you'll see, and this may or may not line up exactly. This is a hand drawn stencil, so it's not 100% symmetrical, but there we found where it lines up. So the next thing you can do is you can now take that and line it up right on top and then just hold that tightly in place. The place 
that's now covered up is going to be the color that was underneath from here. So you can take this and make that kind of a two-part stenciling experience. So you can use it that way, which is one of my favorite ways to do that. And um, let me show you in here. So this on this page that you've probably seen online already, I've just stenciled just regular. I didn't do anything fancy, I just used a bronze paint and just did that right on top of the paper. So you don't really have to do anything special with the masks or you can, you know, make them a two-part thing or whatever it is you want to do. So I'll show you one more thing and we'll use the peacock mask for this. You could put the stencil part of it on here and you could put your color through the middle and then when you lift it off you would have the peacock shaped, peacock shaped paint on the paper and then the pattern would be around it. Or we can do what I will show you right now and you can put your peacock on the page. How should we put him? Let's put him like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the paint and I've got this <laughs> not so nice pattern. I think it's nice. It's uh, got plenty of pattern underneath here and this is one of my favorite things to do just in general. I like to cover up and leave little windows. <laughs> the mask off of the page carefully, especially with these delicate ones because if you're too aggressive you could tear the mylar, which we don't want to do. So now you can see that we have our peacock shape is the negative space that's left behind here from where we've been painting. And what I'm going to do, or what I can do, is now take my brush and continue to go in and feather that out. I could cover the entire background if I wanted to, but you can kind of see what you could do there. Right, let's take something that will contrast pretty well. How about a red one? Let's get the Sharpie. And you want to be careful. You don't want it to be too wet. Even though it's a paint pen, the tip doesn't necessarily like wet. So let's make sure, first of all, Okay, we burped the pen, ink is flowing, paint is flowing, we are ready. So you can just come in here and now you can start to add detail. And you can see how he's really starting to stand out from the background. And you have all of this wonderful pattern inside of the negative of the shape. So you could do you know, whatever you want, which is, let's see if I can find a page in here, which is what I did on this one that I showed when we released the stencil. You can see I've basically done the same thing. If you look really closely, you can see that I just took the mask and I went around it with green, just a very light green, so that all I had was this leftover space and then I colored it all in with markers and then I put the mask back in place and then I said okay put this other one here and then stencil over it so now I've got the mask in place underneath here so that the design doesn't get on the inside of my peacock so I can literally mask it off and have that so that you can do that as well. Okay, and then just one more way that we can use these masks. Let's grab these and I get my brush and let's get some paint and I'm just gonna put a little paint right on there and get my brush and just kinda spread that around a little bit. I want a nice block of color and I'll clean that off later and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my 
mask in there while it's still wet. And I'm going to get myself a baby wipe. And I'm going to do what we call reduction stenciling, which is really great with masks. And my, ma my baby wipe may actually be too wet, but you're still going to get the picture here. I'm going to wipe the color off around the mask and then when I lift the mask up you've got some nice little design you can see you've got a little design and it's subtle and then you could turn it over and clean your stencil we may be getting a little bonus color here clean it and then it's actually going to act a little bit like a stencil. So there are a couple of things that you can do with masks. So I hope that that helps, that anybody who's got questions on how do you use them, how do you use these in particular, that that'll help you and you are having some ideas now and some inspiration on how you can go ahead and take these stencils and masks and use them in your own work.